Broadcast oh. is now starting. starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi. Okay. Welcome. Uh, the, the International Model Stock Club uh, is a better investing model club open to the public. Our meetings are held on the third Monday of each month at this time, the exception being December when, when we meet on the second Monday of the month. All our meetings and stock studies are held online, allowing us to have members from around the world. Our current members are from the United States, Canada, and China. Guests, as observers, you will be muted during the meeting and will have an opportunity for questions and comments once the meeting ends. Any companies mentioned today are for educational purposes only and are not intended to be a recommendation for buying or selling any stocks. We ask that you conduct your own review and analysis of any company of interest before making an investment decision. This meeting may mention products or services not endorsed by Better Investing or the club. The views expressed are those of our members and do not necessarily re represent those of Better Investing. This meeting is also being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel for future use. Uh, also, uh, my name is Joanne Obata. I am stepping in for Hanny Michael, our president, who is unable to attend today. Uh, next, we will have our treasures report and portfolio review. Is Tom Jones here? Yeah, Tom? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Giving you the screen, Tom, for the treasures report. Oh. Okay, oh. um, let's see if I can find it. Okay, okay there, <laughs> there you go. There we go. Uh, wait a minute here, if I can get this over to the side and... Uh, also, as a reminder to our club members, could you please mute um, if you're not talking? Wait a minute, now how do I start the slideshow? There's, hmm, there's a... A way to do that. You can just click on the slides on the left and and go through them like that. But 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 usually it it allows me to uh, see where it says slideshow at the top. Uh, or the other way. Oh, there we go. go. There we go. Yeah. From current slide. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now that's that's big enough for everybody to see. I'm oh sure. yeah, it's great. Okay. Um. Well, this is our. Um, current uh, gain and loss statement uh, as of Friday, uh, Friday's data. <clears throat> uh, <we've clears throat> our biggest winner so far is Schwab uh, of the stocks listed here. And then we've got three that are in the negative. Uh, we've lost a little money, uh, Biomarin and uh, Qualys and Vertex. Um, Oh, what's happening here? The arrow down arrow didn't work. Okay, uh, this uh, manifest investing uh, recommends uh, selling stocks when the um, the price performance is trailing the market by 20%. Um, so over the over the past year, uh, the S&P 500 <clears throat> has gained 48 and a half percent. So these stocks here in the the red box are trailing the market by 20% or more. Uh, so that's, you know, I mean, this isn't an ab absolute rule, but it's a, it's a suggestion, something, something to look at. Of course, we need to look at fundamentals. Um, I noticed that Qualys is down uh, one month, three months, and 12 months. There's no, no positive performance at all on, on it over the past year. These are the sector performance of the, the ETFs that uh, the morning, uh, the sectors, the S&P sectors for the various, uh, uh, I guess, the, the sectors in the market. Our club has the, the largest position in uh, communication services here, which, you know, Facebook and Comcast, and I guess followed by health healthcare. Uh, the financials we have 10 percent in with Schwab is in that, uh, in that in that sector and that's that sector is up uh, 82 percent this I think this can be a little bit uh, misleading uh, because you know these this 12 month return you know the market was way down last March so 
and then things have recovered. So I mean, the further down something went, then if it gets even if it gets gets back to uh, to to normal or a little bit better, you know, you're you're measuring off the bottom. So I don't know if this is you know actual uh, uh, company performance. It, it, this won't repeat, I don't imagine. Uh, another selling discipline is when the 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 par projected uh, annual return or potential return, the par value that manifest uh, assigns it is, is below the average market um, the market average so uh, the all the stocks they cover of the average uh, return is 5.8 percent and the three stocks here in the red box are below that number did uh, or for the two actually Dis Disney and Schwab uh, are projected to uh, underperform the market the others, uh, some of the ones in the green, are five percent, five to ten percent over the market. So that's that's where we like we would like our all of our stocks to be, I guess. Um, this they have this feature called a worksheet, and I I took the liberty of, uh, of adding Amazon and eBay, the two stocks that are going to be presented tonight, to see how that would affect the portfolio. I uh, uh, theor theoretically purchased one share of Amazon for $3,200 and $2,000 worth of eBay. Uh, that would uh, uh, de decrease the ca the cash uh, position from 27.5% down to 20% or 21 and uh, raise the, the par value to 9.5% from 8.8%. 8 .8%. So the, the par is not going to increase dramatically if, if we purchase these two stocks because I guess they're a small percentage of the uh, of, the, of the overall but it would, would raise it a little bit um, this is uh, what uh, this chart is sorted by uh, stock price to Morningstar fair value Morningstar uh, uses the discount cash flow model to value what they consider the fair value of a share of stock is um, and it's uh, you know the best best buy is undervalued is at the top overvalued is at the bottom and in the middle what is what they consider fairly valued so uh, they're giving Amazon a 0.77 which is some a little undervalued and uh, eBay they say is about fairly valued and they're saying that probably uh, uh, Domino's and uh, Schwab are overvalued according to their model. And here's our uh, portfolio by size. We have, uh, you know, about almost 15% small, 28 mid, 30 in mega, and uh, 26, 27% in cash. And here's our uh, sectors you know i showed these these figures on on that other chart um the largest one is communications healthcare is 13.6 um so i guess that's it for the um treasury report unless uh, anybody has any questions Okay, take it away. Thank you, Tom. Um, I think you are up for the um, stock study now. Uh, do you want to? Uh, um, oh, did, did Tom Loftus want to go over? Oh, no, Tom any... Loftus. Yeah, investment policy. Sorry, Tom. I'll uh, Tom Loftus. I'm going to make you presenter. Okay. Okay. So everybody can see my screen now. Yes. Okay, the um, stock, stock portfolio review that we're doing is uh, highlighted in Mike Torb Vincent's uh, manual stock selection portfolio management magic, and this is uh, covered in chapter two of his uh, manual. We do it each month. Uh, this Tom has gone over the performance and the um, dis diversification. I'll just hi uh, highlight uh, the um, the highlights of the report. So this is 
the value section C and by the criteria that Mike uses, Algonquin Power meets all three by criteria and uh, Inogen and Comcast uh, meet all the, the cell criteria. Th uh, this has been uh, sent out twice, once a week before the uh, meeting and then was repeated again last Friday. Uh, the one uh, issue that we have with the portfolio review is how do we uh, put stocks in the watch list? Do we include all the stocks that we've sold? Um, the stocks that um, are to be presented and the ones that have been presented. So a potential watch list of the recent solds is Air Lease, Kirkland Lake and Lamb Research. Um, and then the stocks that were, are going to be presented this evening are Amazon and eBay. And the one stock that we didn't buy, the First American Financial, is uh, it could also be included in the in the watch list. So, do we have any agreement on uh, just what we want the the watch list to be? Um, I think the issue is who's going to follow the watch list because they you have to have updated SSGs, right? Yep. So somebody. Also, okay. I believe we bought First American Financial. It's the first. I think I've got maybe got that wrong. It should be Fidelity. Okay. Yep. Yes. Sorry. Correct. It's okay. Um, just I just on the watch watch list. Right, any watch ID? List. Uh huh. I. I was thinking that, for example, in the future stock studies, we can, if we want to think about what to study, we can take a look at the watch list to see anything is promising. We can go from there. That's one idea. Um, being already presented depends on the company. For the Fidelity, for example, that was a competitor of a first American financials. If this company is stronger than the other one, I don't see we need to have two same companies in the same industry. I don't think it's necessary, right? Because we try to buy the best in the industry, within right. the industry. Okay, so, so should I just send this out for comments? Yeah, that's this, a good idea. Yeah, okay. one suggestion I would have is that when you get to the point that from a current portfolio, you're gonna suggest something to be sold, maybe one could pick up something from the watch list and suggest for buying right like to replace exactly, exactly. yep mm -hmm. because then you kind of trading one that you're not gonna be following anymore for something different and well i think joanne's point is that even if it's in the watch list somebody has to look after it so that you so that you know that the opportunity is there to buy it that so you're so ready. Yeah. you keep the data current Yep. Oh, so, so you don't actually do any other research than just updating the uh, quarterly or the the earnings and sales, and you don't change your estimates. Is that what you're saying, Tom? Well, it has to have current current data. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't. Maybe once a quarter, somebody could uh, look and see if they think the projections are reasonable. <laughs> But uh, you know when when the earnings reports come out. But uh, other than that, I think just updating the data would be fine. Okay. Yeah. But that's what I was suggesting. At minimum, maybe we just whoever suggests selling picks up something that wasn't up to date and updates it for that time to see if it's still. Well, we're going to have a week ahead of the meeting, too. So we just have to decide who's going to look at it. Right. I'll, I'll I'll send it out for comments and then we can take it from there. Sounds good. That's Sounds my good. Uh, presentation, Joy. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Um, actually, uh, Tom, I think Reddy has a question. Oh, and it's actually yes. for Tom Jones. Yes. Are you there, Reddy? To unmute yeah. yourself. Ready. Do you, you need to unmute? Okay, uh, maybe he's not there. We'll come back. Ready's not ready. Ready's not ready. Ready's <laughs> not ready, right? Okay. Uh, uh, Amazon first or eBay first? Tom Jones, you have any preference? I don't care. Okay, let's okay. do Tom, Tom Jones. He's okay. 
All right. Palms are red. Okay, so I am going to present Amazon. I'm sure everybody is pretty familiar with Amazon and most people are no doubt customers. Um, <clears throat> they're a huge company, one of the biggest companies in the world. Their 2020 revenue is 386 billion, which I can't even imagine how much that is, but that's a lot. Uh, they have uh, 1.3 million full-time employees, full-time and part-time employees. And they recently announced they're going to add another uh, 7,500 workers uh, in the U.S. and Canada, primarily in uh, warehousing and distribution. Jeff Bezos is the current CEO. He's going to be stepping down and becoming executive chairman this summer. And Andy Jassy, who is currently the head of uh, AWS is going to become a CEO. He's also, he's also a longtime uh, Amazon employee. Uh, this is a notoriously tough place to work. I mean, the warehouses, we've, we've all <laughs> been in the news, how difficult those are to work. And the, there's a lot of pressure on the executives and uh, engineering people to, uh, to, to perform. Uh, here's Bezos's 14 leadership principles, which I will, you know, I've, everybody probably has access to this, so I think you you can you can read read it on your own, but you can imagine somebody who has 14 leadership principles really, you know, is a pretty demanding guy. Um, here's an article that was you know written in 2015 that talks about how uh, difficult it is to work inside the executive uh, ranks of uh, Amazon, if anybody's interested. Um, they have uh, online and physical stores where they sell physical goods, including groceries. They have their own inventory, plus that of third-party merchants. And they earn fees and advertising dollars from these third-party merchants. They make more money from the third-party merchants than they do selling their own goods. Uh, they also sell di digital goods, which is ebooks, audiobooks, streaming music. Uh, they sell devices. They develop the Kindle Reader, uh, Fire devices, Fire TV, Fire streaming TV. They have the Alexa um, digital assistant, which has been incorporated into the Echo devices and the Ring devices, which are home security. Or I guess uh, probably I think they also do you know, like smart home. I'm I'm I don't have that, but uh, I think that's what they do. Um, they also uh, do public make publishing deals with authors. If, if an author wants to, he or she could uh, self-publish a a book on on Amazon, and they have various ways to uh, share the revenue. They launched Amazon Pharmacy in uh, November 2020. Um, which you know, I guess it isn't really. Well, it is. It is up and running. Um, it's pretty small right now, I think. And they've made over a hundred acquisitions. Some of the these are some of the ones you've probably heard of. These uh, these these ABE the Books American Bookseller Exchange is a used book uh, platform, and Goodreads is for people to find suggestions of books to books to buy. Uh, they also have a logistics operation with the distribution centers. They have 110 in the United States, 185 globally, plus a, a lot of trucks and airplanes to move things around. Um, they also have uh, prime member memberships, uh, $119 a year. They have 200 million prime members now. So this alone uh, generates 23.8 billion in income. They also have web services where companies uh, uh, can share the computing uh, power and expertise of Amazon for computing, storage, database analytics, and machine learning. Uh, here is a, a chart, it might be a little hard to see, uh, of the the values of the uh, acquisitions that they've uh, acquired, Whole Foods is the biggest. That's uh, 13.7 billion, and all the rest are, you know, like a around a, a billion or less. These uh, 
the, the circles here represent uh, the size of the acquisition and the, the names are just kind of where, I guess, wherever they would fit. Um, Zappos' the shoes, um, some of the ones that are kind of uh, maybe less uh, familiar, there's one called Kiva Systems, which is a ro robotics company. Uh, they only do things for Amazon now, and they make all the, the robots that are, Amazon has a lot of uh, robotics, or they're introducing it into their warehouses, so Kiva Systems makes that for them. Um, and uh, they have, t the Twitch is a, a gaming platform where people can play video games or uh, also watch other people play games. This Annapurna Labs, somebody I had never heard of, they were an, an Israeli company. Uh, they have e expertise in web services, and also they make low-cost semiconductors, which Amazon is, uses in its data centers. Uh, There's a company called Souk, which I believe in Arabic stands for Marketplace, their Arab World e-commerce site. They renamed it Amazon.ae to give them some presence in the Arab word, world. And they also acquired several small startups, which you know don't really, you know, uh, rise to the level here. We're talking billions of these companies uh, that they acquired for Alexa development, which is their digital assistance. They needed, you know, that voice recognition and artificial intelligence expertise, so that you know they hired a bunch of people and got uh, uh, good engineers to to, to uh, develop that uh, device. Um, the year-over-year -year results, the North North America, they're divided into three divisions. They have North America, International, and Web Services. And uh, they, for for uh, quite a while, they uh, sort of hid Web Services until it started approaching 10% of their uh, uh, total sales. And then they, you know, they, they had had to break it out, but they sort of operated that in, in stealth mode for a while. Uh, so North America is 62% uh, of the total, international 27, web services is 12% total revenue, but web services is much more profitable. It accounts for, oh, from at the, for 2020, it accounted for 59% of the uh, operating income. Well, you know, only 12% of sales. Uh, this is the, First quarter data for year over year from 2020 to 2021. So uh, North America uh, grew, grew the fastest. And uh, you can see that the web, web services uh, was, oh shoot, was 59% uh, uh, for 2020 of the operating income but it dropped down to 47% uh, uh, for, uh, for the uh, first quarter because they're, uh, it didn't grow as, well, it didn't grow super fast and they're, uh, they were selling so much stuff with the, the pandemic on the, uh, uh, on, on the website, so, so much merchandise. Um, now here's uh, a chart of, uh, Online versus uh, online penetration of uh, of, of e-commerce. E oh, I guess uh, online is the orange and the in-store sales is the blue. So you can see that the and the, the numbers represent the percentage of sales that are e-commerce, and uh, you can see they're going up about one percent a year until 2020. They went up like almost uh, five and a half percent. So a uh, big jump there, again, pandemic related. Um, the e-commerce market share in, in the US, you can see Amazon is way out ahead here. Nobody else even comes close. eBay's 4.7%. Uh, uh, international e-commerce, uh, Amazon has 13%. eBay has 3%. And the uh, the three Chinese companies, Taobao, Tmall, and uh, JD.com, uh, have 38% uh, combined. Um, 
digital advertising, um, the Amazon Mar uh, 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 sorry, <laughs> uh, Amazon's uh, uh, market share increased over over the past year. So did Facebook's. Google's market share decreased a little bit, but they're all you know the three biggest uh, players in the e-commerce or pardon me, the digital advertising. Uh, thought this was interesting. This comes from Arc Investment Management, which is a, a, mutual, a mutual fund company. They have actively managed mutual funds. They are predicting that digital ad spending will be more than retail rent spending in about four years, if you can, uh, if you can believe that. I don't. That's uh, that's pretty wild. Um, so, um, if the cloud computing market, um, Amazon leads leads the market with the 32% of the market at I guess the end of 2020. Uh, Microsoft Azure is 20%. Google Cloud is. Uh, nine percent uh but uh, amazon didn't grow as fast in 2020 as microsoft and and google uh, and google it was interesting i saw a reference here that google lost a lot of money on their their cloud but uh, you know i guess i don't know if they're uh, buying computer equipment building data centers i would have to assume uh, but this is you know just how they chose to do the accounting um so um you know these these companies. You know, unless Amazon uh, growth rate increases, you know, if, if these all stay uh, the same next year and the year after, uh, Azure and Cloud are definitely going to cut into Amazon's uh, market share. And I found a reference that they they expect the total cloud market to increase about 18% uh, going forward. Uh, what's the difference between regular computing and cloud computing? Well, with um, the traditional computing, you have an IT department where they set up everything manually. It takes a long time. A lot of mistakes can be made, and it's generally a small scale. With the cloud computing, the users can go directly to the cloud provider, the, you know, the engineering department or the sales department or whoever needs to use the data can uh, work with the cloud people for automatic setup and it can they say it can be done in seconds or minutes it's it's scripted you know they use the templates that are uh, available and it can be any scale you know if the company uh, is fortunate enough to double in size in a short period of time they don't need to buy a whole bunch of new computers they can just pay amazon for more services um, Streaming music, which Amazon uh, is, is the number three player here at 14%. Spotify and Apple are a little larger. Uh, video, video streaming, uh, the number of uh, subscribers worldwide. Netflix is way out ahead, number one. Amazon's about uh, fifth place with about half the number of subscribers as Netflix, which um, that's interesting. If they've got uh, 200 million, 200 million uh, Amazon Prime subscribers, but they're only counting 75 million customers, I guess uh, those uh, a lot of people aren't using it. But I didn't, didn't think about that till just now. Uh, here's the company's history. The you know what I thought was um, important milestones. I don't think we need to go over that in detail. Uh, here's the stock charts. I thought these might be a little interesting. The stock price has gone way, you know, over the last five years, it was, you know, maybe 750 up to around uh, 3,200 now. Uh, it's been for a while here, it had a flat spot. And then at the, you know, when the pandemic be began, the price went down a little bit, but then it shot up over the next couple of months and the, it's been sort of range bound here recently, which that's this, this is a, a, a two year chart here. Um, you know, it's been been pretty, pretty much range bound. It's not, you know, down to the, it isn't a, you know, uh, and this company just, uh, it's been very successful, but they don't seem to like 
uh, trade on uh, PE or anything like that. So uh, and we'll get to that when we get to this uh, stock selection guide. So here's the three to five year growth estimates from uh, various sources. Um, you can see just just about uh, Argus is sort of the outlier here. They're using 14% uh, earnings per share growth. All the others are uh, high 20s or 30%. The analysts at, at Morningstar, I guess they sort of aggregate a bunch of analysts is 41.5%, which, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's just, uh, I think, off the scale. I don't see how that can possibly happen. But anyway, uh, Sales, uh, you know, uh, you know, around uh, 20, 25 percent for three to five year projections. The company only gave guidance for one year and only for sales. They're expecting to grow sales at greater than uh, 25 percent for uh, this year. Um, so let's see here. Here's the. Um, stock selection guide. I don't know, but do you guys need me to make it any bigger? Maybe I can do that a little bit here. Um, so, um, Tom, yes. This is a great report. Thank you. So um, here's their, uh, you know, pr projected sales. You know, they've had pretty, uh, Pretty steady sales growth, it looks like, uh, revenue growth over the past 10 years. But, uh, you know, earnings have been, uh, you know, recently they've been more profitable. But, you know, they've been, uh, I guess, historically been uh, pouring a lot of money into the businesses, uh, building the business. And also, I think cloud services has a a lot to do with it. That's been more prominent the last few years. That's a lot more profitable than the the other other lines of business as we saw uh, saw earlier. But this stock doesn't uh, doesn't really seem to trade on uh, earnings 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 fundamentals. You know, I di I didn't do those the big charts thing on it. But you look at the the PE. I mean, you know, there have been times when the company lost money or made just you know tiny amount tiny amounts but the stock price didn't didn't really go down because people were uh thinking about you know what the the potential is uh they've got you know good pre-tax profit on sales return on equity debt to capital those are all positive i projected uh, 18 percent uh sales growth and 20 percent earnings per share um which is a little you know a little bit conservative compared to what those that estimate charts was, and then you know what the analysts are here on uh, um, the BI site um, for um, uh, IPE. I selected 60. The current PE is 61, um, and I selected 45 for the low PE which was just pretty much to get the uh, uh, the low price reasonable. The the low price this year was uh, 23.30. Uh, so according to this, uh, it's got a, you know, potential return of 143% and uh, upside down ratio is 5.4 to one. But, you know, like I was, like I was saying, this stock doesn't really, um, trade on uh, fundamentals. This isn't an up straight and parallel company where they're, you know, they're growing sales and uh, earnings at 15% uh, a year every, every year. It's uh, uh, just a, kind of a, a different animal. And this hasn't, doesn't really, historically hasn't fit uh, the BI model, you know, over the past uh, many years because they haven't made any profits, but I, but I'm you know if a person bought them and and held on over the years, I mean they've just gone up over tr tremendously. I think you know from the IPO price, if you adjusted for splits and things like that, the IPO price I think is about a dollar fifty, and now it's up to like uh, uh, thirty two hundred. So it's just uh, been a re remarkable story. 
and uh, I don't know, do, do people have, have questions or uh, you want to put that off until later or I don't know what? Did they, when they mentioned streaming, they didn't mention Peacock at all? I guess not. You you mentioned, you know, Netflix, Netflix and Hulu and other, and they didn't mention Peacock at all. I guess it's it's, it's not there yet. Um, I don't know. I, let's see. Let's see if I can. And Tom, we should have try to do a discussion um, about you know about your stock now because what I think we're going to do we're going to change it up a little for this meeting. We're going to um, vote after you and present. So any discussion should happen right now while while you have all your information. Up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I've, if Peacock didn't show up, it wasn't wasn't in the, the chart that I found, and uh, you know I don't know how current. Those charts that I found may have may not be totally current, and you know I don't, I don't know how accurate they were. But, but I guess is is Peacock part of Comcast? Yeah. Okay. It didn't um, exist in November 2019, so that's probably why. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, if you think November 2019 but, but, was the date. But think of the growth if they start out with a zero base. Right. Yeah. Tom, any reasons why the earnings got doubled since 2018? Because they did not acquire anything for a few years. Um, well, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a combination of, of, of things. You know, they've got uh, more, more revenue from the cloud. And also, uh, it's it's the way they how much money they spend, what the what the accounting is. If they if they put a lot of money into data centers and warehouses and things like that, they they can they can pretty much manipulate their earnings, whatever they want their whatever they want their earnings to be, depending on how much mo how much money they spend. Mm -hmm. And this is is my take on it. And Bezos. Uh, has uh, you know I guess more recently they've uh, shown some more profits, but he's right. n notorious for uh, sp spending money to you know try to uh, you know make Amazon the biggest most most successful company, and that's you know that that's the focus, and he's he's willing to spend the money to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, Even the you know, was the trade report that there was, um, there was, uh, it was noted that Morningstar values them as a undervalued company right now. They were, the fair value is 4,200 according to Morningstar. I saw that in your trade report. Um, right. One of my friends owns Amazon. He follows the news a lot. He doesn't follow the financials that much, but he follows the news a lot. He notices that they always beat expectations on their earnings reports and their quarterly results always exceed or beat or whatever you want to call it. And, um, uh, they don't seem to go up too much though, their price. And their earnings keep getting better and better, but their price is uh, not rising considerably. So do you think it's an undervalued company or fairly valued or? I, uh, I, I think it's about fairly valued, maybe, maybe slightly undervalued. Uh, I, I own some myself. I am not uh, rushing out to buy more at this price. But I, but I, but I don't think it would. It's the worst company to buy. I mean, there. I don't see it really going down that much unless something dramatic happens. But it, you know, the, the price has been uh, sort of range bound over the over the past uh, year, year and a half, uh, and uh, and it's it's really hard to say. Like with this. Uh, the the pandemic you know i mean like the they've sold uh, uh you know the all the e-commerce e uh sales have, have been big because of that and when things get back to normal people get get back to shopping and that's there's going to be probably a, a downward trend in in, in e-commerce but that isn't really um, it isn't the largest source of uh, Amazon. It contributes, but it isn't the Amazon's largest source of income or uh, operating income. 
Tom, do you know how they make money off of uh, the, not the web service, but whatever they call the, you know, just online stuff. Do they take like a percentage? Is it a fixed fee? Are they selling their own products? How does that part work? Well, they, they have, to, they, they sell their own products and they, you know, they, they, they will either buy, they, they buy, they buy from people. They're not a manufacturer. They have some things like Amazon Basics, like their batteries, kind of their exclusive stuff, or they they'll mm -hmm. buy things and keep them in in their their inventory. And then a larger percentage is these th third party sellers. They call it Amazon Marketplace, where mm -hmm. people will will list the, their their products on Amazon. And I think that you know they can you know charge up to like fifteen percent for people who. If they want something to be prime, uh, they'll whatever they sell, they'll only get uh, you know 85 cents on the dollar for whatever whatever they're selling. But gotcha. Amazon sure it is prime, and then they'll people will get get free shipping. And then also there's a lot of things you know I've heard like toys or whatever. There's some some things there's uh, you know you look at your search results on Amazon and there's like you know it says 27 pages or something like that. Uh, in order in order to get on the first couple pages, you have to you have to buy ads, and so that's uh, th that's a source of, of, of revenue too. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many what is it break out the third party sellers versus the others at all? Uh, have a, to do, do, and I I don't know the uh, uh, the percentage. I think that the majority of merchandise is uh, is third party merchandise on, on the site now. Or at least the majority of the income is. Okay. Is there ever any talk about a dividend? What's it? I you know it's I I, I would doubt it. Uh, you know, I, I haven't heard anything about it. You know, I don't know the uh, uh, the, the particulars, but you know, it's it, historically what they uh, they want to do is is pour um, money into, into into growing the business, and they also I guess they're spending a lot of money making movies now. You know, I don't I don't know what what a, such such a good business that is, but they're dumping a lot of money into making movies for. Uh, the, the prime video. Um, so I would think that uh, Bezos's philosophy has been to uh, invest in the business rather than to uh, distribute the money elsewhere. That's just my take on it. Thank you. So are you recommending to buy? Um, yeah, that, I think so. I think well, why not yeah. buy 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 one one share and and then see what happens. At least it'll be entertaining and it's not <laughs> tremendously risky. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. Um, Matt, are you ready? Yep. Okay, we'll make you the presenter. I can share the right screen. Should just see the first cut. That's all I have. Yes. Yes. You know. Yes. We see it. Okay. Uh, I didn't make a presentation like Tom. This was very good, but I went low budget. <laughs> um, so eBay. Uh, I really just did this because I saw Tom was going to present Amazon, and I've been following eBay for quite a while, and it's just a really good contrast, I think, to Amazon and kind of the story that it presents um as an e-commerce company so um basically just the kind of summary is so ebay is pretty low risk right now uh with a potential mid i would say to high reward depending on how much growth they can generate in the business so in comparison to amazon it's far simpler um so they're essentially just an e-commerce marketplace at this point they don't have movies there's no streaming they're not in physical stores uh, they don't do web services and all those other kinds of businesses that amazon does they do what they've always done which is allow people a place to sell their stuff 
Um, but some other good reasons to buy eBay right now, um, shareholder friendly management. So they've had a lot of activist investors over the last, I'm going to say four to five years. Uh, and they've really started to increase the buybacks and they initiated a dividend uh, about two years ago. I believe it was 2018 or 19. Um, they have a pretty stable position in e-commerce. Everyone knows who eBay is. Um, a lot of people, at least if you're like me, kind of forgot that they existed. And then every once in a while, you can't find something on Amazon or wherever it might be that you're normally looking. And then eBay turns up as a pretty uh, viable alternative. Maybe if you need something used or something like that as well. Um, they still generate a significant amount of cash. They have great operating margins in the mid to high 40% range. So they make a ton of money for a pretty low investment. Um, they have very low and inexpensive debt. I'll go over how much it was, but they just refinanced pretty much all their debt at below 4% and some of it out for 30 years. So they locked in very, very low rates for, I believe it was about 3.6% for a 30, for 30 years. Um, and then they've kind of staggered that debt <clears throat> for between five and 30 years too. So it's not going to all come due at the same time which also makes it pretty low risk. Um, the really strong position in their top six global e-commerce company, believe it or not. Um, they have an improved focus lately as well. So they've sold off. They did have some kind of ancillary businesses. They own StubHub. Uh, they had a classifieds business, which to us as consumers, we wouldn't really notice the difference between the classifieds and the regular business, if you will. Um, but they've recently sold a lot of that off, which has given them a lot of cash, which has allowed them to return a lot of it to shareholders and initiate the dividend and the buybacks and things like that. Uh, and then I guess last, you know, so they're only top six globally, but they're potential takeover target. So they're fairly low valued for an e-commerce company. So we see Amazon trading about 60 times earnings. Uh, eBay trades, I believe, were around 15 to 16 times earnings. So for a company that has around mid, 40% operating margins. Uh, they're really pretty cheap and they have great brand awareness as well. So not a bad um, you know, potential if somebody was out there looking around for a company to buy. So with a market cap of around $40 billion you know, for a company that might be looking to get into e-commerce, um, you know, say it was Apple or Google or um, a company like that, right? A very large company that's maybe looking to make a play. eBay could be a potential. And they have a ton of data on customers and already a pretty large international network. Um, so with that said, um, despite, where was I gonna go here? Um, so some other catalysts though, I guess, you know, even, the, the story here is even if the, the sales stay relatively the same and growth is pretty just average, there's some potential other catalysts uh, that could add to it. So the growth in the collectibles market, so trading cards, sneakers, watches, clothes, things like that, values have just taken off recently. So as those values increase, since eBay takes a percentage of all the things that are sold, eBay is going to make a little bit more money as well. Um, they just announced last week that they may start to accept uh, cryptocurrency payments. So um, one of the big complaints, at least one of my big complaints, is you buy this crypto and there's really not much you can do with it other than turn it back into dollars. Um, if you could buy things on eBay, this potentially makes a good outlet for some of those dollars. Um, as inflation starts to pick up, the value of the things sold on eBay will also start to pick up. So uh, where a traditional retailer or Amazon, you know, their costs will increase as inflation increase. eBay doesn't really have any costs because all they do is take a percentage of other people's items. So they're not going to see the growth in their costs, but they will see the growth in the revenue. Um, and then lastly, something that they touted, and I have no idea, no way to really know if this is beneficial or not. Um, they're saying there's more focus growth as they use AI to aid eBay sellers. So Somehow they're going to use AI. I kind of feel like this is just a buzzword that they say, um, but they did talk a lot about this in their most recent earnings call. Um, they're going to use 
a artificial intelligence to aid the sellers uh, to hopefully sell more things. So that is another potential catalyst. Um, just a little history. So Evo founded in 1995. They're one of the original large e-commerce companies. Um, they currently have 187 million active buyers, sixth largest, like I said. So here's this chart I found from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So Alibaba is the largest, Amazon second, by GMV, which is gross merchandise value. Um, so Alibaba, Amazon, JD.com, Pin Duo Duo. I don't even know this one. Maybe J and Jane know this one. Uh, Shopify after that, and then eBay, which eBay actually went from seventh up to sixth. So they actually grew a little bit um, ahead of some of these other ones. My Tan, I don't even know how to say that. Walmart, Uber, Raccoon, Expedia, Bookings, and Airbnb. Um, so some of the recent sales, just kind of going over again, uh, they sold StubHub for $4 million. PayPal, they spun off. Uh, every eBay shareholder in 2015 got a share of PayPal at the same time. Uh, they sold their classified ads business uh, for $2.5 in cash and then also kept 44% ownership. So if that grows, uh, they'll get some value there. And then they've also made public recently and they have not yet uh, sold this their Korean business, uh, which they think they can get around four and a half billion dollars. So that's another four and a half billion in cash that they think could come into eBay that hasn't yet um, to add on to the cash that they currently have. So uh, continuing on down. So this is the part that I personally like. Um, and then I guess I should say I bought this. This is the other reason I like eBay. Um, so they have in 2019, they started their dividend, like I said before. Uh, in 2020, so last year, they repurchased $5 billion worth of stock. So today, their market cap is $4 billion. So last year, they repurchased around you know 10 to 12% of the stock, depending on what the value was they bought it at. Outstanding. Um, and they still have another $5.7 in repurchase authorization that they could uh, repurchase stock. So $5.7 billion on 40 equates to about 14% of all the outstanding shares. So if their earnings don't change at all and they repurchase that stock and the share price stays the same, we'll get a guaranteed, if you will, 14% earnings per share growth. Um, and then also you add in the four and a half billion that they might get from selling the business and that's a pretty substantial amount. Uh, debt is pretty low at only $7 billion and then eBay has $4 billion in cash. So net debt is only about $3 billion uh, when you take the cash out. Uh, and then again, like I said before, they just refinanced between 1.4 and 3.65% between five and 30 years. So the debt is not a concern in my opinion. Um, they've generated about $3 billion in free cash flow. So they're a cash generating machine uh, compared to the amount of debt they have. Um, continuing down, uh, again, 187 million active users, uh, attractive cash generation, significant data. I'm just saying that I think they're a good takeover target here. Uh, so going down, uh, five-year growth sales only at 4.6% versus the industry obviously growing much faster. 27.4% uh, earnings per share growth versus 73% of the industry. Their pre-tax profit is really high because there's been, as they've been selling some of these businesses, they've had some uh, lower pre-tax profit compared, so it looks really good. Um, their return on equity is great at 52%, so very stable business. That's what you'd expect, especially as they're buying back shares. Uh, debt to capital, a little high compared to the industry, um, but I'll show you on the SSG, a large portion of that why it's so high is because they've been buying back so many shares and keeping debt at about the same level. Uh, again, current PE ratio is at like 15, so very fairly valued uh, e-commerce company. Uh, so 90% of the revenue of eBay 
comes from the fees from selling um, from items sold on their website. 10% is generated through ad sales. So the bulk of it comes from the fees in the items that are sold. Uh, projected growth rate I use uh, was 9%. Uh, this was, I mainly went with uh, Morningstar who projected mid single digits because I started to look at some of the other analysts say a little bit higher sales growth. So I increased it from mid single up to 9%. Uh, increasing fees and gross merchandise value will increase sales growth, uh, future growth, similar as more people go online and the growth and other collectibles should go up. So here's the estimates, um, pretty much between right around the high, mid to high single digits going out two and five years. So the average was 9.7. I went with nine on the SSG. Um, and then earnings per share growth, I put it 9.9, .9, which is actually a little low compared to what you have here. Average to 16.4% um, from all of these sources. Um, and I think, you know, with the 14% of outstanding shares, so you get your growth there from the share repurchases, 9.9 .9 is probably a little conservative. So I think on the SSG, I have a pretty good floor. I think this would be the low point, and then you know there's potential for upside from there. Uh, projected high PE, 18 and a half. Low price is $46. Let me switch over to the SSG right now. So you can see all that in here. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out. So the total debt, uh, you can see it grew uh, through 2017, and they've been uh, pulling back a little bit of debt, but more or less maintaining the same amount. So they're up around 10 billion. Now they're down around eight, or I think it's actually seven even more recently. Oh, you can see here, down to close to seven. Um, the shares outstanding again. So here's kind of where the repurchase has started. They've been continuing and actually accelerating, I'd say over the last few years. Um, the net income kind of all over the place. I didn't really want to show you that. Uh, so there's just the nine and the 9.9% .9 growth that I have. And I crossed out these two years. Uh, this was when they sold off some of the businesses. So it uh, made 2016 look like really high earnings per share, 2017 look really low. So all of these were more stable, going with 15, 18, 19, and 20. Um, you see the return on equity is really high it was excellent last year with the pandemic and all the increase in sales um so mid 50s i will take that free tax profit pretty high around 26 percent five year average and then the debt to capital is increasing which is red but again the bulk of that is due to the decrease in the shares outstanding so even though the total debt has also decreased the shares outstanding is decreasing faster, which is increasing the percent debt to capital. Um, valuation, so here they've been pretty steady in the high PEs, uh, in the high teens, low 20s, and then the low in the, we'll call it like low teens, if you will. Uh, current 15.8, at least as of Friday, I think. I'm not sure what happened today. Uh, there's high PE 18 and a half, which gives the high stock price of 105. And then the low, I went with just a low PE of 12, which gave us the 46.30. Then as I scroll down here, upside downside 3.0 to one. Uh, so total return 12.7%, uh, projected average 8.8. .8. But again, I do think it's kind of a floor. So I think there's potential for the earnings to be even higher than the 9.9 .9 that I've got in there. Um, and last but not least, uh, the dividend. So they pay pretty low. It's only about 1.2%, but they increase at about 10% a year, uh, at least for the first two years. So that is the presentation. Any questions? I have a quick, just general question. What, why would a company um, uh, go into debt to buy back shares? What does that accomplish? What are they trying um, to do? Yeah. So if you can increase the share price, like the earnings per share faster, 
uh, and you can get debt at 2% and increase, you know, you can lower your taxes incidentally by paying debt and increase your share price. Uh, it is sometimes advantageous to take on debt and buy back your own shares. Okay, thank you. Yeah, not that that's necessarily what they're doing. They didn't want to take on yeah. buyback. Yeah. I, I always view that tactic as like so, a, a subterfuge or, or a trick, you know, where they're artificially inflating the earnings by decreasing the number of outstanding shares. Of the yeah. earnings per share. They don't make any more money. It's just, you know, you raise their earnings per share. Right. They're just optimizing the capital structure um, based on the debt rates. Matt, so, um, Matt, is uh, Craigslist still a is Craigslist still a competitor to uh, this stock? Uh, yeah, eBay actually used to own part of Craigslist, and then they sold it off. So, theoretically, yes, they're a competitor. Well, Matt, on the same topic for competitors, but how significant? Can do Facebook Marketplace and how um, they might compete with or are competing with eBay and the future and now? I don't have any data on the Facebook marketplace, so I guess I can't really say. Okay. Uh, also, I use eBay. I used eBay in the past year to sell some books and stuff, some old books I had. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's a good credit to eBay that I thought of them first. <laughs> but yeah. uh, the website is kind of uh, kind of old. I wish they'd updated. I wish they'd stop focusing on AI so much and focus on just making the website look a little bit newer. <laughs> But um, right, it's very. They haven't changed it much in twenty years. Yeah. Or so. But people so keep Matt, using it. So I don't know if that's the charm. So Matt, this is mm -hmm. a really highly leveraged company. It's also operating in a very competitive uh, sector environment. So how do you address that? Uh, I don't think it's highly leveraged at all. Um, you know, just based on the amount of cash they generate, they could pay the debt 70%? off. Yeah, that's percent debt to capital. So the actual debt is not that high. Let's go back here. So the total debt is about $7 billion. And if I look at, let me take the net income here. So the net income is, they generated almost Five and say five and a half billion in net income, right? On eight billion in debt. So if the debt did become a concern, they could theoretically stop paying the dividend, stop buying back shares, and pay the debt off. Um, so the debt isn't a concern. The only reason it's growing is because they're buying back so many shares. This percent debt to capital. So if you look at this so decrease they, they, after the distance increases, they, that will raise this number. So if they have enough earnings, why don't they use the earnings to buy back a share? They are buying back shares. I know they are, but then you say they are raising debt to buy back the share. That's why you increase the leverage. I, I did not say that they're raising debt to buy back shares. They have debt, but they're not raising the debt. See, the debt has been decreasing for seven, three years now. So it was at 10, and now it's down to seven. There's some level of debt that makes sense to just keep as opposed to paying off. I mean, if you can get debt at 1.3%, why wouldn't you have it, you know? This company is not as exciting as Amazon, isn't it? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have one question, Matt. Uh -huh. um, your low price is uh, quite a bit higher than uh, lowest price shown in the last 52 weeks. Uh -huh. uh, is that reasonable? Yes. About 20%. Uh, so the price dropped during the pandemic. Yeah, like the pandemic was the, that's the lowest back then. Yeah. But otherwise... And then quickly rebounded. Okay. 
Mm. So, I mean, 46 might be a little high, but the price the dividend supports, we can change to that. Actually, about 20% of the current price. It's not too bad. Yeah, if you go with price yeah, and dividend supports, it's too too low. Old. 29 will be too low. Yeah, I mean, that's too low, but that's why I went with the PE of yeah. 12. Yeah, Yahoo, Yahoo shows 52 week range, low is 42. Okay. Well, yeah. we could do 42. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I agree it's not as exciting as Amazon. Um, I suppose, you know, my personal thoughts are. Uh, in order for Amazon to grow, they have to grow sales pretty significantly. Um, in order for eBay to grow, they have to do exactly what they've been doing. And if they do more, there's potentially uh, greater share price appreciation. So what are their my... um, risk factors for, for eBay? Um, basically competitive landscape. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think kind of to John's point, right? This Facebook marketplace come in and everyone starts to sell there instead. Um, I mean, maybe that's you know definitely a risk. Uh, okay. But that's uh, definitely the biggest risk for sure. Okay. Can we do the voting now? Um, is there any are there any motions to either um, buy either uh, Amazon or eBay? How much cash do we have again? Yeah, I'm trying to see how much. Yeah. Uh, Tom, Joe, oh, we got like 26 or 20. We got $26,000, $27,000. We, 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 we have total, a lot of cash. We, we can afford it. What's our total dollar amount of uh, value, uh, including cash for our, all our stuff? What's our portfolio um, worth, I guess? 80, isn't it 80000 or something? Uh, about about eighty six thousand is is the total. Um, now we got about twenty two twenty three thousand in uh, in cash, so that's twenty six point eight percent. So cash. if we wanted if we wanted to buy Amazon, we'd have to sell something, right? To buy Amazon. We've got twenty two thousand in cash. What, what sector? Amazon. Oh, twenty two thousand. Oh, okay, twenty two thousand. Okay. And it's and um, well, I move yeah. just as John, I move that we buy uh, three thousand dollars worth of eBay or whatever that whatever they share would be for that. E eBay? Yeah. Okay. I can't comment on it until we make it a second, but I'll comment on why three thousand after we get a second, if we get one. I'll second it. Okay. So it's a uh, motion to buy three thousand. Okay, discussion. I think three thousand because I feel like we have so much money now in our in our portfolio that if we pick two thousand or one thousand is ridiculous now. So, I feel three thousand um, is a is a good portion to pick. Okay. Uh, do you feel like eBay is because what we're doing when we have two stocks to compare, we want to pick the best in its class or its sector. So, do you feel that eBay is better than the Amazon? No, I didn't know that. I, I, I guess I should have known that, but I thought that we, we picked two in the past. I know we picked two stocks. Yeah, in we're gonna, we're, I think we're trying to get away from that. Um, we shouldn't. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Unless anybody has any comments about uh, holding. That seems it seems odd to have that kind of a policy if it's if they're good two good stocks, you know, in an industry that's growing and it. Um, you know, and and it sort of fits into where we want our portfolio. Why not buy? Especially we have so much cash, right? So I think yeah. I think un unless we are short on cash, I don't think we should restrict it that much. Okay. Well, and since we, we have two motions, yeah, we have two motions. So you, uh, we can just vote on it and see okay. what the results right. will be. What do you mean I by best? Sure. I guess is the other question. My best, yeah. Uh, I want to make a motion to buy Amazon, uh, $3,000. So we have a 20 summer. 
if 10 shares is it will be what uh, too much oh we don't have that much cash no oh my god uh two shares yeah so one share is about 3200 yes yeah and tom jones um when you buy, we buy the stock, we're buying based on dollar amount. We don't, aren't looking at the stock price, right? Well, uh, that's what we've done to traditionally is, is bought in, in, in dollar amounts. Uh, but, you know, I was thinking uh, with, 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 with Amazon, you know, since the price is about 3,200, if we bought one share, that would be about about three thousand dollars, rather than buying like 0.975 shares or something like that, seems kind of like an odd amount to buy. Uh, but you know, we've got, we we can we can do whatever we want. We can do uh, partial partial shares. I, I feel uh, like no, actually, I want to buy more because based on your projection, Tom, that return is about what? How much was 17 percent or something, or maybe 15 percent more? I just will double it. And I just felt like, okay, should, I was just looking at my own portfolio. I said, like, okay, should I take the chance that, you know, double my money next five years? So, so can I just buy maybe five shares, about 15,000? Um, Tom, what sector is this in? Yeah, what does it do to our portfolio? I, I would have to assume they're con consumer cyclicals. Okay. Let me have and and we, right now we, we've got the, uh, Dominoes is our only consumer cyclical, okay, okay. and that represents 1.9% of the portfolio. Okay. So right. this would uh, would definitely like if like if we're adding nine thousand dollars, is that it'd be like about around, maybe around that to ten. Uh, what's communications? We've got it's consumer uh, cyclical, yeah. Yeah, so that would put us up, you know, I'm just guessing maybe like 18% or something like that of the portfolio, but it's, uh, I think it would still be less than communications. What about if, is eBay also in the same? Yeah, same still a large I, company? I would assume they're both large consumer cyclicals, but I don't know for sure. Let me take a look at eBay. Is eBay large? Um, uh, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is a large cap. Okay, large cap or large, large sale? Cap. Ten thousand. Yeah, it's okay. It's a large. Yeah, large cap. Uh, How much is the dollar amount for the motion? Yeah, I actually, honestly, I was thinking to buy five, five shares. Um, it will be fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand, something like that. Oh, okay. Probably two shares. Yeah, I would say two. Okay. Yeah, two yeah. shares. Yeah, I, I, I think that that would uh, put us put us out of the well. If you buy uh, eBay, also that would uh, put us above uh, twenty percent in that uh, sector. What's the target? What's the goal for each? Is it twenty five percent each or ten? What's the fifteen? I think fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Per per sector. Per sector or per company. Oh. Well, higher. It's twenty percent for company, I think. Twenty percent for company, according to a better investing thing I watched, at maximum twenty percent per. I watched this better investing uh, online webinar, and that's what they mentioned that for the maximum twenty percent for a stock. I think I'm our clock. Yeah. Ours is our yeah. clock. Yeah, our clock has a guideline, right, on this. Yeah. I, I, but I don't know where to find it. It's in the I thought uh, you say something, uh, investment yeah, policy. Yeah. yeah. So wouldn't you just uh, uh, divide 100 we by Routinely, we we'll buy stocks. Uh, I think routinely, we buy stocks like 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Why don't we just stick that? We could buy. All of our stocks like that, and then it's the same procedure for yeah. every one. Instead of buying shares here and and, and yeah. dollars there, and I don't know, it seems like okay. easier just to do two dollars, two thousand, one thousand, three thousand, and instead of doing number of shares. Okay, so okay, what? Because this, because this is three thousand, so then we just buy one share then, if we take um, Bernard's approach. 
No, he's so saying was, just go by oh, go by the dollar amount. By dollar amount. Oh, 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 so, oh I thought so he wants seven thousand dollar amount. Yeah. Oh. Seven thousand. No. No. Oh. Oh well. It's as I understand, the records are just kept. It's not. We don't actually buy the stock. No, it's, it's virtual. And, and we're trying to work our uh, cash yeah, virtual. down. We're trying to get our cash down, so we shouldn't be apprehensive about purchasing more than two thousand at a time because we don't have that many stocks to to manage. Well, I yeah. I think you know b both of these stocks are, you know, probably good good companies that they're they're going to be successful going forward. But I I don't think either one is screaming buys at this point either. Yeah. I think we can just buy one share just to see, right? So, like four thousand. We're trying to keep yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, okay, four thousand. Then, for, yeah. then you have a remain. You have. That's okay. I think we're, we're just trying to. If you can, you buy four thousand of. In the reality, because I never buy. I always buy even number. In reality, can you buy like half share? Well, it dep it depends on your brokerage. You you can buy okay. you can buy partial shares. Okay. So we, it says no more than ten percent of portfolio shall be invested in a single stock. I thought we raised that to fifteen, but I guess it's ten. So we're already over, like Facebook is already over the recommended. Okay. 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 So I recommend. With... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, just buy one share of a uh, Facebook. Facebook. You, you mean uh, Amazon. 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 Oh, sorry, Amazon. Amazon. Facebook and Amazon. Amazon. I mean Amazon. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. And we're not yeah, doing, okay. we're not buying by the share. We're buying by the dollar amount, and we're rounding it up to thousands. So four thousand. That we get okay. one share. Okay. Okay. And okay. Anybody I'm talking it? Amazon, not Facebook, right? <laughs> right. We have to buy four thousand dollars of Amazon. Do we have a second? I second it. Okay. Who's that? Jane. Jane. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Now um, we can move on. Oops. Why is it? it, it Are we was, voting? Uh, there, was no? there a motion to buy eBay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it should be in your, um, oops. Well, the second? The second yes, one? Second. Yeah, I second yeah. it. I'm so should team. we go vote now? Oh. You, uh, you, yes. you, we have a time to vote. You can vote now, yeah. you can't vote after the meeting. Do we have okay. that There's 25 windows? Motions for Amazon. Uh, what should we do? What did you say? There's two motions for Amazon right oh. now. Or two. I see, I see three. Uh -oh. I don't know what's happening here. Okay, try to I don't, refresh I, it. Refresh I don't it. See eBay. Refresh. Okay. okay. Oh, there's eBay. Uh, yeah. eBay, is number six, eBay is number 66 and Amazon is number 67. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. So okay. I, While I, we're waiting, can, go ahead, Jay. Oh, next month I will be leading to a, to a stock studies and um, I expressed that in the past the way I assign people to do stock studies and I talked to Henny that we I think it's time for us to volunteer you know whether who you want to uh, what month when you want to do stock studies so I sign up for June okay uh, I'm looking can, for a couple uh, volunteers can we discuss this at the club uh, business Yes. At yeah. the end. Okay. okay. Um, Reddy, I just wanted to get Reddy has to leave early, so I just wanted him to have a chance to address Tom Jones's uh, article on IIPR. Reddy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, I I looked at the, the, some, a few reports, analyst reports, um, IIPR industrial innovative industrial properties are doing good. Our assumptions for uh, revenue and EPS growth are still conservative, uh, but reports are good. I would not worry about people are writing um, news saying that banking regulations will change. Currently, the banks that cannot directly loan any money or deal financially with the uh, cannabis companies. Uh, IAPR has a unique situation that they, so they are buying the properties and leasing back to them. They are 100% um, leased now. They acquired four new properties this uh, 
uh, this quarter. Um, four new acquisitions. Uh, it is the the EPS growth is excellent. Dividend increased uh, 32 percent over the last year. They are continuously increasing dividend. Um, the revenue is excellent. It's a rapidly expanding portfolio of properties. Uh, zero short time liabilities and um, the the uh, the only reason that it's hold is because the price uh, is showing hold otherwise uh, it's a good company um, i think it will show positive results for next couple of years at least until all the cannabis industry is open many states and uh, banking regulations are relaxed so that they can loan directly to the cannabis companies there's no direct loan or banking that can be done with these companies uh, iipr is taking unique position in that sense okay okay thank you ready yeah okay are there any questions for ready about uh tom's article or is it wall street journal i guess okay so now we can thanks go. thank you thank you Okay. Yes. What, what was that for? I can't see the thing. Something? What happened? Was it? Did that come out today or something? Oh my God. Um, no way um, is presenting, Bernard. Yes, today yes. it. It was a, a Wall Street. It was in the Heard on the Street section of the journal today, and I I forwarded it to everybody. I think where you can read it if you want. Okay. Yes. Yes. The only. Yeah. Thank you. Thing. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, next we have Adam uh, with Franco Nevada as a buy. Okay, nice, Adam, I'm going to make okay. Adam the presenter. Okay, yeah, I can't. Uh, Can you see no my screen? Now? There's nothing yes. on my screen. There's nothing up yet, Bernard. Where about now? Is there? Yes, oh, okay. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So Fine. it's really, um, I mean, the Q1 update kind of for this company. I just did the annual last meeting, and uh, with the new results in QI, I'm updating the SSG a bit. So uh, the big news is that the Q1 was really a good uh, quarter for them. And actually, it was a record revenue, um, so much higher than they anticipated at the last year annual review. So that led to even increase in their guidance for the next five years to 25% growth. I kept the SSG numbers the same, but um, as you will see with the quarter in up, uh, updates, quarterly numbers going up, the EPS and all this uh, also went up and projection obviously going up as well. So so this this practically with the new uh, data being uploaded and new EPS, uh, high EPS, you will see that this pushed this company from previously hold to buy. Um, quickly, as far as big numbers here from uh, the quarter and trailing quarters, as you see, 28% growth. Um, again, big numbers on EPS. Uh, the interesting part is that the current P is about 48 and the average is about 56. So as you see, it's kind of below that average, which it's another kind of indicator that it's in the buy territory uh, if you go by that concept as well. Um, the upside down still holds above three uh, as long as we buy below 151 and the compound return for average is 12.2. Uh, so uh, what happened is that maybe on the nicer picture here the guidance was kind of increased um, and I guess I get the numbers from what to what uh, so from 600 uh, 630 to 636 60 for the uh, gold equivalent ounces um, the guidance for the revenue from the energy asset is still the same, and that's keeping the price of gold from what they did at annual review at 1750. If you look today, I think the price of gold was 1872. So even price of gold is playing towards their advantage at this point as well. 
So in a sense, uh, I can quickly jump to projection of here. So as you see, I kept the forecast the same. In spite of that, because of the quarterly versus annual, you will see that in the annual, the right now the the forecast for EPS is about four. If I would go back to annual, it would go back to 3.8. So the quarter really makes even the EPS grow significantly, pushes it into the buy territory. Right now the price is about 149. And as long as we are below 151, you know, we we are in the buy ter territory, as I mentioned. Again, um it's a our play here is it's a kind of a gold kind of investment although it's not a direct gold company it's 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 a it's kind of streams revenue kind of uh company it's still it's a diversification that we have which i think is good if we could afford i would recommend to to buy another 2000 shares um and yeah and if you guys have any question let me know i can also point out that um, those are the q and results showing the record things as far as efficiency as you see the revenue keeps going the expense of you know um, administrations and so on doesn't grow up at all so they kind of really making good the cash uh, from from their investment they have very good diversification as far as not only geography but also you know as far as how many mines and so on from asset perspective um so good good kind of um good story all along like nothing has changed except that they're doing better than even pr predicted in the year and the year end can you show the bottom the yeah, the, right there. The bottom of that page, yeah. Oh, bottom page, sure. Gotcha, thank you. The question we had um, actually is either for Tom Ooh. Joseph or Henry is about the PE. Uh, Adam and I, we were discussing right before the meeting. So he using the value line and a modified the PEs um, right, so we, as far as the yeah, data sure. goes, yeah, I mm -hmm, did mm -hmm. modify the two, uh, override two of those values in both the annual and the quarter data based on the value line uh, adjustment for non-GAP data. So that's maybe if you don't have those updates, your numbers would come up a bit differently. Right. So Henry, do we need to, should we use a GAP or non-GAP for PEs? Oh, Tom, if you have an answer. Oh, well, I, the, the data yeah. I'm updating, sorry, just so you know, it's just the EPS and and sales, right? Typically, that's what the updates are. Mm -hmm. I think I think you have to use it depending on, you know, yeah. if, if this, you know, if you're using value line, you're not using gap. So you've, you've got to decide if the company has extraordinary income or costs on an on an ongoing basis or and you want to make sure that they're not adjusting their earnings using a non-gap uh using a lot of uh, or out of the ordinary expenses or or costs okay how do you determine that well, if a company's constantly having one-time expenses, uh, that would, or you know, that 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 kind of indicates that something may be going on. You gotta you gotta look further into it. You know, is this are, are they truly one-time occurrences, or are they ongoing in order to boost earnings? On their value line, they do specify that so they have a non-recurring items for 2020 is a dollar oh four. And it seems like they adjust it every year, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. 17. So yeah. 
I think the idea is non-recurring is not a common income component. That's why they take it out to show that the actual operating income or loss. So if there's such an extraordinary item, usually we will do adjustment and we will go with the non-GAAP figures. So is it are the are the earnings per share on the value line non-GAAP then if they have not necessarily they, because sometimes most of the time if there's an adjustment that's needed, then value line will show a non-GAAP. If there's no okay. such adjustment needed, they will show a gap. Okay. Oh, so if it says excluding non non recurring items, that's non gap then. When they exclude right. that. Okay. Did they have they have a footnote there in the little yeah, box down it. there? Yeah. For, for, for the yeah. year, it it'll say what which years they adjusted and how much they adjusted okay, for. Sure. Right. I'm gonna quick show my screen just to show everybody what we're looking at. Okay, I was um, about to do that too. Okay, so here we so have Adam, the earnings. Yeah. Oh, can, so here we have the earnings per share, and Adam adjusted like two to two seventy five, and uh, here's the adjustment right here, a dollar four. So if we subtracted the dollar four from the two seventy five, we would have gotten the um, one seventy one, which the SSG generated, which I guess is the the gap, the actual gap number. Are there any other questions? Yeah, um, I want to look at the SSG. Okay, uh, I'm giving it back to you, Adam. Okay. I like to look at low PE. The mm -hmm. estimated low PE you have is 45. 45, yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the current average year, 46. I know, yeah. but the current year is down to 28. Can you adjust to 28 and see how it comes out? Are you saying to eliminate 28? Do you think that 28 is, a, is 28. Do you think a 28 is a liar? Um, I, I won't say that because it's a current year. If it's a previous year, possibly I will treat it as a liar, but it's current year. Mm. So are you saying you want to replace the low to 25. be the current year? Yeah, take a look at it. So go to, yeah. Okay, I can show, try it, but. I don't see why 20. Oh, and then use uh, trillion, 12 months, 3.08. Three, 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 oh, oh, eight. oh, oh sorry, no, go back, go back, click that button. Yeah, just a toggle yes. auto update to TTM EPS. No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, try again, try again, manual update. It did not oh, use no. 3.08. Okay, so. I, I, if you go back, Adam, if you go back to first page, I want to see you choose the quarter, right? Quarter starting put, uh, point. Yeah, if because it's a, it's a based on the quarter now versus the annual I did last year. Like yeah, a, that's fine because um, sometimes it, it does make a difference if you do annual, but this time it doesn't really. It you know, does. If you look, really... if I select annual, look at the what happens to the EPS. It will drop based on the annual numbers to 3.86, right? Mm. Because the quarter was so strong, it takes that into account and increases. That's right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But I, I'm saying that once you change to 28, it's becoming whole, not a buy. Right. I, I don't know why I would go just with the current. I typically look at the outliers maybe and then take average. But uh, to me, that's picking the last one. It's not, I don't know, first time I hear that. Yeah, it's a current year and you look at the current year trend. And that's to be prudent. I'm not saying that that's a But I'm hard saying we're looking at five years forecast, right? So I don't think current year is the only indicator of the five year future forecast, right? But that's the way you also use 60 as your current year for high PE. Well, that's no, but I, I took ever, kind of uh, closer to average 60, 60, because I didn't want to oh. go too high, right? Mm. to be realistic with the the future price because then it, it really like when I compare to with value line projects as a high price and so on in 18 months and five years you would really go way beyond 
the the low price I took average thinking um, that's the more idea, Adam. The idea is that if it's a current year, is a low price PE, is a low PE, or is a lower PE, either is a high PE or a low PE. Usually, we we'll go with the current year because it's a trend that's coming down. That's called the, it. We call it PE contraction, and that's a trend. Also, that's why we need, uh, yeah, Adam. Also, your P, low PE. If you click the 77 that box, you did not use the trillion 12 month. So yeah, actually your low price should be higher. Click that seventy-seven dollars that box. And so just you use three point seven five. It should be three point oh eight. Yeah, Go manually ahead, uh, enter. Uh, man I'll call. Uh, yeah. See where it Toggle. says two seventy-five. No, no. Yeah. Go. Ahead. Just tell them that. See where it says two seventy-five, Adam. On the. Yeah. No. See where it says. We need to talk about that. No, no, don't toggle it. Just go in there into that box. Yeah. Delete that and put 308. And then, and then you have to click back, click back, click back, click back, click it back to the low P multiplication. Yeah. And then do yeah. manual update. That's or right. did it already update? It did. They already updated. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. So update study. Mm -hmm. Yep. One twenty nine. What's? Oh. Okay. Yeah. I okay. typically put a low price as about twenty percent of the current price. So, uh, to me, that low price is much lower than. It's too low. Be. It's too low. Yeah. So one twenty. Okay. One twenty. Twenty percent of that. So what's the 52 weeks? Uh, uh, 105? You're, you're, 149. You're be higher. Mm. Yeah. So 80% of 149, 57. So what did you have before, Adam? And your it's one for 119, 65. Oh, I think, as I said, I put 20%. Yeah, yeah. So it's about 120. 119, 120. Yeah, 119. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are there okay? So what we're going to try to do is um, we're going to are we ready to see if there's a motion to buy or sell? I mean, or buy. Oh, and just to let you know, we just bought Franco Nevada two thousand dollars worth last month. So we are, have a total of over four, a little over four thousand dollars in Franco Nevada right now. What was the price? Does it tell you what the price was? Uh, I can't okay. see that. It probably was lower than this. So. In our portfolio, do you guys remember how did this company perform? Did it meet um, our projections? Do you guys remember? Because I don't remember. Tom, do you remember? Okay. I don't remember. Wait, oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, well, it looks like it's fourteen point seven percent. It says percent total return so far, I guess. Okay. Based on Adam's five seventeen mm -hmm. SSG. Okay. So, Joy, you are gonna are you gonna present AQN? I thought. According to our portfolio no, review, it's a whole. It's a whole. It's a whole. Okay. Yeah. And I think in Tom, um, Tom Jones, oh. in his uh, par, it's the par is pretty low. So. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't. I think because the, um, for me, I'm. I have concerns about their debt, um, and their cash flow. It doesn't cover interest. So oh, okay. 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 Uh, do we? Are there any motions for Franco Nevada? Okay. We can always come back if we want to. Um, Facebook, Megumi. Let's see. That's a. Uh, oh. Yeah. I don't know. So do mine just want. Uh, mine was just a buy. Mine was a 
my recommendation was to buy up to the limit of um, what our portfolio allowed for a single uh, stock, I mean, single company. And um, I thought it was 15, but it's 10. So we're already over. And then also um, if we if we wanted to spend the cash, but it sounds like we're spending the cash. So I'm gonna, I think we should just hold it. Okay. All right. Uh, PRL. What was your return? Oh, yeah, SSG. Um, me? Okay. Me, yes. What was your return? Do you remember? Uh, hold on. I have it open. Um, actually, my it's Facebook. Facebook. The return. Um, so at high PE, which I had selected at 24, which is below, um, you know, the analyst. It was the 18.3 compound annual return, and that average PE was a 16. Mm. Mm. You know, there are there are some risk factors, but you know, I just feel like Facebook is such a strong company. If we have money, we should just buy more. <laughs> but okay. if we had to spend the money, yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, I, this is Bernard, and I did take it as one of these webinars, Better Investing webinar. And, and the speaker said that you could take an individual stock up to 20% of the portfolio. No, I, I, that's what he said. I remember that. Uh, I, I don't know if it has official policy of better investing, but this is one of their speakers. Uh, I, I think 10% is maybe too low. I for, agree. Especially, yeah. uh, and, and I, I think, Mark Zuckerberg got here and talked, and he talks about he's got some new plans how he can use uh, uh, augmented reality yeah. and, and virtual reality, and he's going to come up with new products. And I, I think Mark Zuckerberg knows how to make money. So it, if uh, I'm not against if we buy more, I'm not against it. Yeah. But it's there's already, also the, the aspect of Apple kind of I, introducing I, those privacy yes. settings, which apparently making a big dent into the Facebook uh, advertisement and so on. Yeah. So yeah, there, it's still too early to see what the effects of the whole iOS 14 is. So that was one of my recommendations for um, just waiting to see how that uh, uh, settles. You know, and there's, al there's always the regulatory um, pending litigations, but I don't think that's ever gonna change. You know, you're always gonna have that. Um, so that's another reason to just wait and see, um, but I don't think it would hurt to buy either. So that's probably not, you know, buy or hold, buy or hold. Just to, just, just to add a little something in there, you know, you want to also look at what percentage you have in each of the sectors. Yeah. Um, this is the biggest, uh, uh, largest sector, I believe, of all of our portfolio. Communication yeah. or yeah. Facebook, we have about 11.2 percent. Communication yeah, services, sector, have a, right? It, yeah, it's the sector, biggest. We have a 22, oh, sorry, 28 percent. So, internet content, we have about 11 percent. Well, and, and, and you, you, you want to really, you know, you really want to look at what you have uh, based on the uh, 11 sections so that you have in the S&P. In other words, technology is one section. So you want to look at your percentage of technology. Technology, we have about 6%, 5.7. Well, you know, they, they created this uh, communications, you know, it used to be in technology and then they, mm -hmm. then, then they, they changed their sectors here a little while back, a few years. And so Comcast, Disney and, and Facebook are now in uh, c communications. And uh, then, we, then we've got this other, other technology too. You add both of those together and I guess that comes to uh, close 28%. It's roughly a third of our portfolio. There's a problem with this kind of a dimension in that every every uh, sector is using 
technology more and more and more it's spreading out into all the sectors it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to classify things when when it's part technology and part other things that's a good point well i guess you could argue argue banks are in technology you know but you just <laughs> but uh but that's uh, uh we gotta separate things out out somehow uh yeah i don't i guess if, if we you know decide we want to there's no firm rules you know if you want to make make a make it make a bet on on facebook going forward but there is certainly uh um political and regulatory risk well we would yeah, have to change also, our investment policy right because it says right in there 10 percent not only that like, Nagumi, if you look yeah. at my peer review then you will see that facebook will be uh comparing against really high growth uh for the second half of 2021 because they will continue to grow, of course, and they will increase their growth in the second oh. quarter. But in the third and fourth quarter, they will be comparing oh. against very oh. high growth in the last year. And yes. then with that, you use the uh, uh, trade, the up, you use the uh, quarter uh, projection starting point. If you change to annual projection starting point, and also if you uh, change your low PE to 13 instead of 19.4 you are using, and you come up with a hole. So I think I'm not quite sure whether it's really a buy. I mean, at this current price, I think it, it's fine if we buy in a little bit, but then I, I think it's not a, a screaming buy for me. If you look at the figures more closely. And also yeah. considering the regulatory uh, risk that Tom just mentioned, I think we we can consider buy a little bit, but I, I would think it's not a screaming buy. Yeah, I think we're like Megumi said, we were at the max for this stock, so we should probably move on. Um, yeah, and I know that uh, as we buy more stock, uh, more shares in other stock, it'll change the distribution, yeah. so we might look at it uh, again. Okay, uh, Piero, Inogen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give well, you the screen. You want to give me the screen? Yeah. Oh, do you need it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. You know, uh, just to talk. Uh, oh, this is my. Uh, let me see what I have here. Um, to talk about um, Inogen. Inogen. Inogen was a disaster right at the beginning, right? So, oh, now. Uh, this past quarter, this first quarter of 2021, it, it was slightly less of a disaster than they thought. So, you know, nothing ever really made sense with this uh, stock, but the market is offering us $66. Uh, we bought it about six months ago for 36. Now it's selling at 66. So within six months, we kind of doubled our money. You know, what, um, Better investing tells us to double our money in five years. We've done we've done it in about six months, and we know the stock is a disaster. And uh, everybody, all the analysts are, t are saying that it's going to be rocky. Well, it's going to go down, and it's kind of you know less of a disaster than it, they thought it would be because of certain circumstances that are true right now. Uh, quantitative easing, interest rates are low. Uh, the uh, the aid payments to families in the United States, you know, making less than two hundred and fifty thousand um, uh, dollars. There's that. Um, other uh, uh, aids that are going on as well. So th these kind of circumstances won't exist forever. And um, uh, Powell, um, whatever his first name is, I forgot. Powell, he says that, you know, the American economy is coming back. So he's thinking about in raising interest rates and interest rates are probably going to be going up in, in another year or so. And so uh, Inogen is going to probably, the price will probably go down. Uh, you know, uh, uh, investors Piero, are hopeful. Yeah. Piero, can you update the data? This is showing 6, uh, 2020. Can you go up to data and refresh, go up to to the top where it says file oh. data yeah uh, 
Yeah, this I just uh, updated the data on an, uh, my first study. That's his oh. file name. Oh, that's, yeah. that's his file name. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the how data, you will see the second tab. How come it's not showing uh, 2020 yeah. data? Okay. If you go well, second tab variation, you will know. Second tab? This, this one here? No, 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 no. Variation, variation and return. And return. Oh, oh, okay. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah, you need to. Okay, well, here it is um, yeah. to present the club. So I just say update data, overwrite company date and the study price. And yeah, okay. Oh, now you're picking different study now. Just no, FYI. No. Yeah, no, this That's is the one that I was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Before you were doing June. Okay. Basic. Okay, go ahead. Okay. 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 All right. So there it is. Uh, oh, well, now it throws kind of things off. Okay. Anyway, uh, the situation that I, uh, I was presented with was that 2020 was the disastrous year. That was the outlier that we had to eliminate. So I told it to, you know, cancel 2020 and project from the annual, but it won't do that. Okay. So, um, the other thing that I looked at again was to look at peers, compare peers, and Indigen is much better than peers. It's always kind of scoring higher than they 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 do, so that was okay. Um, but in the short term, um, valuation okay. In the short term, okay. Now that's thrown off uh, because of this figure here. But we know from uh, value line that they expect a dollar fifty in the next five years. You'll be earning a dollar fifty in the next five years. So when I had to um, determine this price here, I said forecasted high earnings per share is a dollar fifty. So I'll delete that. Okay, an update study. Okay, so now it comes out as $84, but the uh, uh, earnings per share is gonna be 404, which is kind of a silly number. Uh, but this is about what uh, Morningstar uh, Value Line expects. They expect anywhere between $85 and $95 uh, in five years. And uh, my low uh, price will be about forty dollars. So anyway, since we're getting about sixty-six dollars for it, um, yeah, sixty-six dollars for it, and it kind of falls right within that range to sell it because the price is going to probably drop. And if it does, we just watch it buy it back when it's selling at a nice price. And um, you know we've already you know, if if we're completely wrong about it the price is dropping we've already doubled our money essentially in six months so the worst of it we've doubled our money the best of it is if we're right and tactically it, its price drops we can buy it back when it's cheaper because it will go up it's technically fundamentally better than all of its competitors. So this is kind of a tactical play. What does uh, management say going forward in the uh, earnings call? Okay, let me uh, bring, uh, what did it say here? Um, okay, the uh, first, qu first quarter of 2021, company reported up blah, 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 as of March. Yeah. Because of the uncertainties related to the COVID-19 pandemic, the company is still unable to provide guidance for the full year, right? Mm -hmm. There's this scope, da, da, da. Never the company believes it is prudent to continue making investments in clinical research. I think your tactic is a smart one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, really tactical. Uh, yeah. we're gonna be, you know, we're going to almost double our money in six yeah. months. Buy it back when it falls, if we still like it, and then. Uh, the, the, the other thing about this company was that it was at the beginning of its growth spurt. 
you know, at the mm -hmm. beginning of a company when they're early on in their history. It just kind yeah. of exploding growth. Well, here, that was beginning to happen in 19, 2019. In 2020, the bottom fell out. The whole, everything just collapsed. So now, you know, uh, they had problems with uh, manufacturing. They had production uh, problems with the production line, line in, I think it's Richardson, uh, Texas. And then there's Golota, Tax, Texas, is, no, Golota, California, I think it is. They would had problems there. They had problems outsourcing in Europe. They had a plant in um, Czechoslovakia. They had problems there. So anyway, everything collapsed. Now they have to reconstitute everything. One of their big drivers was uh, uh, business to customer sales, the di direct customer sales. And one of the things that they had to do for that was their sales staff. They've reduced their sales, sales staff uh, quite a bit and they're trying to rebuild it, but they're having problems rebuilding it because they have to give these, pe these salespeople training in medical stuff and they're hard to find. So their sales staff is down, their production facilities have to be reorganized. And uh, as they're saying over here, they're still investing money, spending money on research and all this other stuff. And they expect uh, the income to be uh, uh, down, like their expenses are gonna be going up, their income is gonna be coming down. They expect um, 20, uh, things will be pretty bad up until 2022 the last quarter of 2022, but I think it'll go further into 2023. Uh, so there are plenty of Carol, opportunities for- uh, Carol, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but we just have a few minutes left and yeah. I just want to get um, Henry's feedback and then we have a little bit of club business. So yeah. um, so your recommendation is to sell? Are there any sell. motions? Are there any motions? I motion to sell. Shin, I would make. I would move. I'll second it. So. I want to mention. I just looked it up, and in, in, in terms of insiders, in the last six months, there's been 220,000 shares bought by insiders, but there's at the same time there's been 954,000 shares sold by the insiders. So that's another element of. A yeah. possible reason to sell. Yeah. Okay. Well, so the motion was uh, made by Jane, and who seconded it? I did. Megumi. Megumi. Okay. Yeah, I know Pierre. When we studied this, I know we uh, anticipated this would happen. But you're right. It's, if it's going to continue to fall, and uh, we've uh, we've made the money, I think it's a good uh, move. Yeah. yeah. We can always buy it again later. Yeah, buy it again okay. later. Yeah, we can add this to the watch list. I, okay. We thought the pandemic will help the sales. Well, actually, it did at the beginning. What they were doing, you were using these portable oxygen concentrators uh, for people who recovered, supposedly recovered from coronavirus. They were giving it to them, right? So it, it helped them. But now what they have, they have uh, problems that after this coronavirus thing is finished, reimbursement rates with uh, healthcare and Medicaid or uh, Medicaid, uh, you know, they're going to be going down. Um, they have problems with one of their big, uh, supposedly big sellers, at, uh, the TAV, the Title Assist Ventilator. Uh, it doesn't meet uh, reimbursement qualifications with the federal government, and they're going to have to Carol, change it. So they can, Carol, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just want to let uh, Henry give his yeah. feedback because I don't want to... Uh, take too much more of his time because he's yeah. been gracious yeah. to give us some mentor feedback. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can do this discussion after if we, yeah. we want to continue. Henry? Okay, sure. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> can you give uh, us some feed, uh, your, your feedback? <laughs> on well, the, only, the, only thing, the only thing you, got, you might want to do is, is look at your, your uh, your guidelines for what percent you want to be in different sectors. Okay. And individual stocks. Um, you know, I don't know if you've done it, but if you go into your, if you've got your portfolio uh, within the SSG plus, if it's listed in as a portfolio, you can pull up some, uh, it'll do the graph for you very quickly. 
you can either show it as a graph or show it as a uh, or a verbiage. Okay. And uh, that, that might that might be helpful when you do your treasurer's report too, because in one graph it'll quick it just quickly shows you what percentage of each of the eleven sectors of the S and P uh, things are in. And uh, somebody had mentioned that you know everything's involved with technology, but uh, but you know. Um, yeah, they use technology, but their their business isn't necessarily technology. Right. right. Uh, so that might that might help. Um, I'm not sure. In other words, and, and when you're looking at selling a stock, I think um, especially if it's a stock that you a stock that you own, you're looking at selling it. You you just might look at what your expectations were in your original SSG. Uh, and I'll send it to uh, Jay, I guess, or, or can send it to anybody. But uh, one way to do that is to, at the top of your SSG, just physically write in what your expectations for earnings are for each of the next five years. And that way you quickly know if a company is going along uh, with what your projections were or if they weren't, you can take a quick look and see why. Uh, how much money you made on a stock really isn't the issue. The issue is, as you were discussing, you know, has something dramatically changed in the company that changes your outlook? Great. Uh, Good points. So I guess when you're looking at selling a stock that you own, the main thing is is to redo the SSG. Um, and you know, is this a stock you would buy, hold, or sell at this point? Okay. Just some thoughts. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate. Okay. We always appreciate your feedback. <laughs> um, are there any questions for Henry? Okay. Well, let's move on to club business. We have elections. Um, this month, so we will be sending out a, a list of the people who have been nominated and we'll be sending that out on uh, my iClub. And then just a reminder, club dues are due to Jay by May 24th. So you can send them to her by Venmo, PayPal, Zelle. I don't know, what else do you take? So any digital media you can use to, uh, and it's what is it forty five dollars, Jay? Yes. If, yes. Okay. So unless you're, you're, you're a, a lifetime member, if you're a lifetime right. member, you don't need to pay it. Yeah, it's forty five. Basically, if you, for example, we got a new. There are two parts of the deal. One's a club dues fifty two fifty two dollars, and we don't need to pay because we gained three new members, so you waived by better investing. There's a club membership because now you belong to a club, so better investing separates club membership plus the SSG plus. The, the total amount is the same, but when you join a club, they separate those two, two fees. That's why there's a $45. So do we pay, I think we got an email recently. Do we pay right. that to, yeah. um, okay, pay so pay that. I will, yes. Okay. So you, you pay me and I will pay to the better investing. Yeah. So this okay. is for the five US? Please. Yes. US dollars. So, yes. Yeah, forty-five US dollars. Um, Adam and uh, Adam and Tom Loftus, Reddy and Isla, you guys don't need to uh, give to. Don't need to worry about for now because you guys just join. I'm going to add your num add your name. I need to talk to BI. I don't. I don't remember. For new members, do they also need to pay forty-five dollars? Henry, do you know? Uh, for new members. Uh, yeah, why don't you con why don't you contact yeah, I don't exactly. I'm not sure right now what the policy yeah, okay. is. Okay. 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 All right. I'm okay. going that to is do a, a, that is a that's a good discount. <laughs> okay. Like I'm going to adjourn adjourn the meeting and we can still discuss. I just want to stop the recording. Okay, so I'm okay. stopping.